What are you doing here, Eric? Well, we're here um, supporting the community, fighting for our neighborhood, fighting for our culture. And we just want to make sure that we're heard loud and clear, you know, to developers, to realtors, to City Hall, to let them know that we are demanding affordable housing in our neighborhood and to support our, our community. Why are you here today? Well, we're here, you know, I think to, uh, there's been an issue with displacement and gentrification in our community for several years now. Um, I think that uh, the sleeping giant is awake now. Uh, I think this is the time, uh, a time in history, a very important time in history to address gentrification, to address displacements. Um, this, it seems like a gold rush out here for some people, um, and we don't believe that we're going to be taken advantage of. We're not just objects that you can just move us around in that way. Um, and this is all about community. This is this is actually the epitome of community coming together for keeping what's ours, what is rightfully ours as people, as community. Um, I think you even said it, Mr. Interviewer, that internal colonialism uh, is the issue at hand here. Um, and so this is what we're doing here to address that. Fantastic. Just hold it right there. Let me ask you a question. Juan, what is your name? My name is Rafael Moreno. Alfredo, what are you doing here? Rafael Moreno. What are you doing here? I'm here supporting um, supporting this movement. You know, like people, we're tired of. You know, I'm born and raised in the Mission District. It sucks seeing you know, like families getting evicted, families getting pushed out, kicked out of the neighborhood. Like the neighborhood is not what it used to be. Now it's not ours anymore. You know, it's time to take back what's ours and take a stance against uh, gentrification. Right on. Hang on. What's your name? Andrea Martinez. Andrea, why are you here today? Uh, to support all of our community members in the mission because they deserve to live here and to have affordable housing. Thank you very much. Let's start off easy. What is your name? Vesely. And what are you doing here? I'm protesting for gentrification. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Evelyn Nieves. I'm a journalist. I'm covering this. What are you doing here? I'm covering this for the nation. I'm doing a story. All right. this movement on the street but this movement has always been inside of us now we're just personifying it you know what I mean with the sound with the love with the fist in the air everybody out here you guys need to show each other some love right now because that's what this is about we love our neighborhood we love our community we love the people who we are we don't care what anybody thinks about us we know who we are and that's why we are here all right, if you don't know already, this is our mission, no eviction. Why? Because it is our mission and we do not need any more evictions. We need to put an end to it. This is what we're out here for today. No evictions means nobody gets displaced, nobody gets pushed out, and nobody gets told they do not belong here anymore. Can you repeat that again? Check.
children to have a safe day, a safe walk. We ask the spirits of the Ohlone people who have been here for a long way long before we've been here, before Rob has been here, before anything was here. The Ohlone people were here. So we ask them permission so that we can have a peaceful day. Because sometimes we think we are right and it's not that way. We're just travelers. We just come to borrow the space to just leave it the way it was and even better than it was. So we just want to ask that way in a humble way and we'll leave it to you guys. I don't know what our part was to be in this, but you guys sound good. We will always Thank shift you. over for the good cause. But we'll join you guys in the back and we'll let the good people do their thing. Thank so you, thank you guys again. being evicted. Right here. Right here. How many of you are tired of your rent going up? How many of you are tired of seeing another house in the mission with scaffolding in front of it, knowing that families in there have been kicked out? Raise your hand if you know there's an election in, in November. So, after months, of community meetings of tenant conventions. In February, there was a citywide tenant convention where tenants from all over the city came together and talked about how are we going to use the November 4th election as a really important moment and tactic to pass bold, strong tenants' rights legislation in San Francisco. How many of you all were there on that February 8th day? And what came out of that meeting was Proposition G, the anti-speculation tax. And what it is going to do, it is, it is going to put a curb, it's going to curb, it's going to tax house flipping. It's going to make sure that if someone comes into our neighborhood, buys a home, evicts all the tenants, and then resells it in less than five years for three times what they bought it for, making massive profits off our homes and off our people, that they're going to have to pay us back. How does that sound, y'all? So on November 4th, please, please remember to vote yes on G. Because it's not just about speculation. It's also about that development at 16th and Mission, right? That is, a, that is connected to the speculative market. When an SRO next door to the proposed 16th and Mission development goes for sale, to be flipped into possibly tourist rentals, that is, that is the way speculation and house flipping is connected to massive market rate development. So we're going to fight all of it and we're going to start on November 4th. So please, make sure you vote, y'all. Society, and I've been born and raised in the mission for 24 years. And I'm out here today because we all know that gentrification is happening. It's happening every day. It's happening inside us where we're afraid to be here. But we're not we're afraid to be here. We're afraid that they're going to evict us, but we want to be here. And we know that it's erasing a lot of the cultural, historical, all these, all these different places and, and things and uh, memories that we have here in the mission. And that's why we have the this project that we're doing, the San Francisco Latino Context Statement, where we're basically documenting everything that that Latinos have put into, because we know we've been here for a long time. So don't, don't believe that stuff where they say, oh, they were just here for a little bit and everybody, everything changes. No, we've been here. Those murals are ours. We help make those. So we know that we've been here for a long time and we're trying to document that and, and so that our generations like mine, my brother's generation, can remember that we were here and we have all these memories that really need to be held close to us. So we have a community meeting on October 11th at the San Francisco Library, the main library from 10 to 5 where we're archiving. You can bring your things um, to, to save them, to make the memories so that the future generations that are going to be here, because we know they're going to be here, because we're going to try to keep them here um, to remember all that stuff. Thank you. That's yes. All right. We almost are ready to head out. 
We're gonna start by reading our 10 demands. Here we have Roberto and Victor. Victor, give it up for them. All right, ¿qué pasa, raza? Si se puede! Si se puede! Our mission! Our mission! Our mission? Yeah. You're supposed to say no eviction. Our mission? 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 No eviction. Si te puedo. 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 All right, give it up for Tito. He learned, he learned all the chants when we marched for Alex Nieto. So, you know what? A year ago we were here. And in a year, if you look back, over 4,000 people, households have been evicted from San Francisco. Seniors, families, children, students, artists, disabled people, these greedy people who are evicting people are people who just want money. Money, that's all they want. And so a year ago, we have been fighting every eviction and we have won over a hundred people's households from being evicted. And we will continue to fight every eviction. We also got the San Francisco Board of Education to give up 1950 Mission Street so that affordable housing can be built. Over a hundred affordable housing units are gonna be built there. And we got the Board of Supervisors and the Mayor to put it in the budget to have the money to build that house. Thanks for Poder and the leadership of Poder and many other organizations did that, did that work behind that. We also got as a community UCSF to donate 17th and Folsom Street, a whole half a block for a park to be built and for over 100 affordable housing to be built. Those are some of the victories that we have had in the last year, but that's not enough because every day somebody's being evicted. Not only families and seniors and artists, but you look at Flag Store on Mish on Market in Valencia. They're being evicted because a greedy landlord wants to build 160 luxury condos. We have a greedy la uh, developer who wants to build on 16th and Mission. So we got our work cut out for us. We are here today to continue doing the work that we need to do to protect and save the soul and corazón of not only La Michonne, but of San Francisco. So give it up, give it up. All right, here's how it's gonna go, local blocos in the front. We're gonna have everybody join them in the front and the flow will be right behind y'all leading with the chants and the songs. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, pull out your chant sheets if you have them. We might go off script. Our mission? Our mission?
Juana Tello. And why are you here today, Juana? I'm here to support all the families, all the working families of color who are here in San Francisco who helped build the city, who unfortunately, because of the rising cost of rent and the high cost of living in San Francisco, are being pushed out of their home. Um, I'm here because we need to take action to defend these families and to let people know that they don't have to fight in isolation. A lot of times when we're fighting these evictions and foreclosures, we feel very isolated, feel, feel powerless, but when we come out together, we can see the power of community and the importance of us working with adults and youth like to build a movement together to defend the environment. Fantastic. Let me see you, let me see you sign. Look at that sign. Let's get down.
people out of San Francisco and we need to fight back. We are the ones who should be driving what happens here around housing in San Francisco, not the developers, not the banks, uh, not even the city planners, but the community should be doing it. All right. Thank you, John. You're welcome. All right. You know, we're going to hear a mix of it. They have lived here all their lives, people that have immigrated from other parts, um, from other parts of Latin America throughout the world. We're going to hear from teachers, we're going to hear from organizers, we're going to hear from people who are really feeling the pain of this enormous housing crisis that we're going through. Are you, are you feeling me on that? Are we going through a housing crisis? Yeah. Are you sick and tired of it? Yeah. Are we going to do something about it? Bienvenida a uno de los a miembros de nuestra comunidad. Vamos a estar escuchando de inquilinos, organizadores, personas que han estado en esta lucha. Así que cada vez que un, un orador venga, por favor, de que darles un aplauso, una gran bienvenida, porque esta lucha sigue y esta lucha solamente sigue porque nosotros estamos aquí, ¿sí o no? Sí. El pueblo unido. El pueblo unido. El pueblo unido. And we forgot one little thing. Just wanted to introduce ourselves. My name is Oscar Grande. I'm with the organization called Poder. People organizing to demand environmental economic rights. I want to introduce. My name is Bianca Gutierrez. I'm a parent at Marshall Elementary School and also a resident of the community. So thank you guys all. We know you're hot. The Giants are playing. Um, we got some speakers that need to say what they need to say. So without further ado. Oh, oh sorry. Entonces él es Oscar. Uh, trabaja con Poder. Bianca es mamá aquí en Marshall. Y yo me llamo María. Soy organizadora con Causa Justa. Así que... Y ahora vamos a darle la bienvenida a Norman. Que es un joven. No, es, pero se parece joven. Ah. Es joven como yo soy. So, we want to introduce Norman Zalaya, lifelong mission resident, grew up around here, around 16th, around this part of the mission district. Uh, he's, a, he's a teacher and raising a new generation of mission residents. And we're going to hear for his testimony and his story. Así que quedarle la bienvenida a Norman. Uh, residente de la misión por toda su vida y maestro ayudándole a nuestros a nuestros niños a, a, a venir en esta, a, a enseñándoles a la nueva generación así que hay que darle la bienvenida a Norman Thank you. Basta ya Basta ya Basta ya So uh, I my mother got on a plane in Nicaragua back in 1972, January, six months pregnant with me. And uh, by good grace, I came here, I was born in San Francisco, lived above La Cumbre, right here in Valencia. Um, I grew up in this neighborhood. I went to Bill Bazaar and got my, my school supplies. My friends and I went to the Kung Fu store, bought Ninja Stars. Oh. Right? The Kung Fu store. What you know about that? Some of us do, right? Because we've been there all our lives. It's still all our lives. I went to kindergarten right here at Marshall Elementary. So I'm homegrown and proud. And I'm teaching now in public schools. I'm teaching in the community where I was born and raised. And I'm struggling to do that. Yeah. That may not be reality for me anymore. But I'm here today to take a stand. And I think 
think it's important that I do stay. I think it's important that members of our community are able to pursue the kind of lives that they want in the communities that they've given their lives to. Right? Yes. So I've been thinking about, about this building. And if let's say this building doesn't go up, right? Which we all want. Doesn't go up. The people who potentially would move into that building, they have choices right now in San Francisco. They'll be all right. If they don't live here, they'll find somewhere else have to live. Their lives will not be inconvenienced. Their lives will not be put on hold. Their lives will not be put in turmoil. But if that building goes up, the people who will be displaced will not have those same options. They will not have choices in San Francisco. Their lives will be put on hold. Their lives will be put in turmoil and chaos. Their lives will be ruined. Right? That's why we're here to prevent that. It's been going on for too long. Too many lives have been put on hold. Too many of us are struggling. Struggling mightily to stay in the place that we call home. I'm also here on behalf of the folks that many times are voiceless, which are the students at Marshall Elementary School. They should have a say in whether or not they want this building in their neighborhood. Right? If that building goes up, the schoolyard is covered in permanent darkness. Literally, the sun is blocked out. The developers made a suggestion to elevate the playground. What is that? Right? But then the school stays at the same level. I mean, it's not a solution. That just goes to say, you know, we don't care what happens to your school. And again, I, I went to kindergarten. I remember what it's like to play in that playground on the sun splash day like today, right? To have that taken away from you and you can't say anything about it, that's an injustice. And that's also why we're here to, to prevent further injustices. Basta ya! Young person from the neighborhood, I was going to say this is the new generation of the mission. But you know what? This is the now generation of the mission. This is her mission. This is her city. We're going to hear from her right now. Let's give a hand to Elsa Ramos. Que la luna bienvenida a Elsa Ramos, joven aquí en la misión. Y que tenemos que recordar que su generación, esta es su generación, esta es la misión de ella. Así que que darle bienvenida y escuchar lo que ella nos va a decir. Thank you so much. All I'm here to do is share a little bit of my story. That's all I got. That's all I can share. Um, it's an important story. It's a story that's really common here in the mission. It's a story that these companies don't want to hear. It's a story that these companies don't care about at all. But it's important. This is our community. Um, my, my name is Elsa Ramos. I was born and raised here in San Francisco. We live right over here on 16 and South Venice. We've been living here for more than 20 years in a small studio with eight people in it. Uh, my family migrated from Guadalajara. They came here to start a better life for their family and for their kids. And this is common. This is all, this is what the mission is about. It's supposed to be a sanctuary place, a safe city, a safe neighborhood for us to be here, for migrants to be here, migrant families to live and to succeed and to move forward from. And it hurts me. I was talking to a lot of people who, who I grew up with out here in the march and the, the thing that we were talking about the most is the pain that we feel from all these new businesses coming up that have so so much disregard for our culture and also so much fucking oh, it makes it really angry that they don't give a fuck about us you know they came over here building condos naming them vida talking about like they're taking part of our culture you know they cutting they're um erasing our murals the one over there with the young migrant boy that one's almost completely gone and it hurts us it hurts our generation um it's killing us because it's killing our inspiration it's kill killing our culture which is what's been keeping us alive 
The mission culture is what raised me. The mission culture is what inspired me to move on and to be the first person in my family to go to college and to get a job and to succeed and support my family. And now they're trying to take that away from us. So I'm worried for my younger brothers. I'm worried for the next generations. Like, what are they going to have? They're going to have to live around these people that they can't relate to. They're going to have to live with these people that look down on them. And that's what's up. Thank you all for coming here. Thank you all for listening to me and stay inspired and keep pushing forward. Thank you so much. Up next, I want to introduce Paula Tejada, uh, Tejada local mer merchant, small business woman, Chile Lindo, right down the street. So lo let's give it up and to her and her story. Congratulate yourselves for being here, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta make this short so I've gotten written down. Community is everyone. Community has to come first before your personal agenda because the community is an ecosystem that has countless ramifications that affect all aspects of society. Yeah. Community is a support system in a society. This is a time when it is very easy to start placing blame on those that are a little different from us. Be careful that you do not become the racist just because someone like a developer, a takey, or an activist looks different. Beware of generalizations in general. Generalizations will only alienate people and cut the potential for dialogue that could lead to opportunity. If we keep our eyes set on the goal, which is to help the people living in the streets in utter devastation, create more affordable housing, keep people from losing their homes, and keep small businesses from closing, then we are creating the opportunities we need in the mission. Let's find a way to channel funds to our local social programs, schools, cultural groups. Again, that is where we need to place our attention. Negotiation. Remember that everything is negotiable always. If there is $82 million to build a building, show us the budget allocated to create a safety net for those that are directly affected by this mega construction project. As a united front, we are making sure that the developers meet the needs of this community. This united front has to grow more and more and include all sectors of the community. This united front has to grow more and more so that through communication among one another and trust with each other and embrace all groups that make up this community. People are power and we're providing the solutions. Pointing fingers will only splinter us and we will lose our power. There are people with integrity in all circles just as there are people without principles in all circles. This movement is rooted in years of activism in the mission and it is only getting stronger and stronger. So big capital, now is the, start, the time to start changing your modus operandi, stop with your bulldozers and start applying consciousness to the equation. Thank you, gracias. Voy a venir a decir cómo este desarrollo va a afectar a los compañeros que viven en los hoteles. First of all, I want to give love and respect for everybody that came out to here. The, the mission, the neighborhood is strong. Right? The warriors of the neighborhood that came out today to stand up for their people, so I got to give you love and respect for that. I'm here to talk about what's going down in the SROs and how this development is going to affect the people there. SRO hotels, we got like the U, we got the Eula, Grand Southern down there. These are a lot of these hotels are what people have left with, right, when they're when they're displaced from their homes, their apartments and whatnot. 
What they're left with is these SRO hotels before they become homeless a lot of the time. Right? It's one of the last bits of affordable housing in the city. There's families that live in these rooms, whole families that live in these rooms, and you got corporations like Maximus developing condos when it's families that have been living here 10, 15, 20 years in these tiny rooms. The conditions in the buildings are extremely horrible, extremely horrible, and what's happening is that the hotel owners, the managers, and the landlords, they're trying to convert these hotels into tourist hotels. They got people from France and all kinds of places coming over here, right, displacing, displacing people who live, who've been living in the mission, who've been living in San Francisco for a long time, right? These places should be homes. They shouldn't be places for tourists to come on in and visit and continue to gentrify the city, right? So it's one of the things, I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time. I just want to leave y'all with that. We have to include the people that live in the residential hotels in this fight and this struggle. There's some of the, there's some of the, what contributes to the vibrancy of the neighborhood, right? Folks have been fighting these hotels for years, for years. Several organizations representing them. They represent themselves, right? So show the brothers and sisters some love, show the family some love. All right, all power to the people. For the land. Primeramente les quiero dar amor y respeto a todos ustedes que vinieron aquí a Luchemos el Grand Southern. Esos son hoteles donde ha vivido gente por años. A veces todas, una familia, toda una familia vive. María es un love. She's doing the hard work of, of interpretation. Um, up next, I want to bring up somebody. But remember, hang out. We got Bayonics coming. They're up next. They're waiting. They're here to, because we march with purpose. We rally with purpose. And we even dance with purpose. Now up next, I want to invite Jaquila Burton to come up from the SF Living Wage, Proposition J. Talk about the need for, we need affordable housing, but we need these damn wages to go up. Que darle una bienvenida a Jaquila Burton, que viene aquí para hablar con nosotros de la propuesta G. Oh, perdón, la propuesta J, porque no solamente necesitamos que las rentas bajen, pero también necesitamos que los salarios suban, ¿sí o no? Hi, my name is Jaquela Burton, and I'm with the San Francisco Living Wage Coalition. So we're living in a tale of two cities. San Francisco has the fastest growing rate of income inequality in the nation. Like this? Okay. Those in the top 5% make more than 16 times what we in the bottom 20% make. At least 23% of the San Franciscans live in poverty. The mayor's economic development policies are to use tax breaks and subsidies to bring high-tech companies to San Francisco. These companies bring in a workforce from outside of the city. Much of the political discussion of the effects of the mayor's economic policies is focused on the housing crisis. But not enough attention has been paid to the flip side of the mayor's development model. There's a job crisis in this town, particularly in the African-American and Latino communities. There's a high rate of unemployment, underemployment, and people even working full-time jobs but still living in poverty. There are young mothers who are working from their, with their for their public assistance checks and welfare to work programs that don't lead to long-term jobs. These are dead-end programs. In a recent report by the budget and legislative analysts portray these programs as dysfunctional and broken. Many of these young single mothers have a family history going back generations in the city. They go through a program that does not provide real job training, that has no plan for moving people to long-term employment, and at the end, they have reached their time limit for public assistance. They are being forced to leave the city, and once they do, they won't be coming back. The mayor's development model is to reduce unemployment by forcing the unemployed out of the city. There are 
two steps that you can do to to counter the growing income inequality and wealth disparity in San Francisco. The first step is to vote yes on Prop J on, in the November, November ballot. This will raise the city's minimum wage from 1074 per hour to 1225 per hour on May Day of next year, and then a dollar each year until fifteen dollars per hour. And after that, increase it with the rate of inflation. The second step is to get the board of supervisors to pass community jobs ordinance that will transform welfare to work programs into genuine job training programs that provide a path to living wage jobs. SEIU Local 1021 is partnering with us in demanding that the city provide training and employment opportunities in permanent civil service positions to unemployed parents in the welfare to work programs. Together, we are sending a message to the mayor that he can't solve poverty by pushing out poor people. We are demanding that the Board of Supervisors adopt economic policies that create jobs for, the, for those who already live in the city. We demand that the corporations pay their fair share of taxes to reduce income inequality and fund job creation. We demand economic policies that work for us, not just the elite. There should be one city for all of us. Thank you. Yo estoy con la coalición para un salario, uh, me estoy cansando gente, perdónenme. Estoy con la coalición para un salario en que se pueda vivir y, y tenemos que recordar que estamos viviendo en una ciudad donde hay verdaderamente dos diferentes ciudades. No, uh, el, el 5% más rico hace 20% más que el 20% más pobre que somos nosotros. Imagínense si ustedes hicieran 20% más de lo que hacen ahorita. Wow. La, el, el alcalde tiene una agenda para mejorar la economía de San Francisco y su agenda para bajar el desempleo en las ciudades, desalojar a todos los desempleados y la gente pobre de esta ciudad y mandarlos a otros lugares para que sean los desempleados y los pobres de otras ciudades. Y eso tiene que parar, porque la manera en que luchamos en contra del, del desempleo es para subir el salario mínimo. Así que voten sí en la propuesta J en noviembre. Aumentaría el salario mínimo a 12.24 el, el primero de mayo que entra y cada año aumentaría hasta llegar a 15 en el 2015 y después de eso aumentaría un dólar o oh, perdón aumentaría con uh, la, el, lo que aumenta el, el, la tasa de inflación uh, y también te, necesitamos que la mesa de, supervisa, de supervisores apruebe una ley para que los, los programas de asistencia pública o welfare a, traba, a trabajo verdaderamente entrenen a personas para que, que, que puedan encontrar el trabajo después de que terminen de su programa porque muchas veces gente termina ese programa y no tiene trabajo y no puede regresar así que están otra vez sin empleo sin trabajo y sin asistencia pública así que recuerden noviembre 4 sí en la propuesta j porque los salarios tienen que subir gracias speakers today. Thank you guys so much. Like I mentioned earlier, my name is Bianca. I'm a parent at Marshall Elementary and we are, I am against this project. I got a son who graduated there and another one in first grade and um, it's a very bad situation for us. We're going to have a huge construction site falling on our playground, taking away the sun from these beautiful kids. 90% uh, Latino families go there. We live here, we walk there and we do not want this development. All right, so there's a petition right over here. Um, Eddie, raise your hand. We want you guys to go and uh, sign this petition. It's to stop this development from happening. Um, I would like now to introduce... Okay, she wants to soy yo misma Bianca, como les dije, soy mamá de Marshall y yo estoy en contra de este desarrollo porque mis niños necesitan sol cuando están en su patio de recreo. Y también la otra cosa que les quiero decir es que Eddie, Eddie, por favor, uh, raise your hand. Allá hay una petición, por favor, fírmenla. Esta petición la puede firmar cualquier persona que está en contra de este desarrollo y las necesitamos firmadas porque... 
el alcalde, la ciudad y estos desarrolladores tienen que saber que estamos en contra de este desarrollo. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you guys once again for marching, for being with us. I'd like to introduce our first uh, performers. They are hometown sweethearts. We love them. Can we hear some noise if you're out here so they can hear you guys? One more time. We don't hear you. To give another thanks to Oscar Grande from Poder who worked his booty off today. Raise your hand, Oscar! 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 Oscar. Alright, you guys, give a round of applause for Bayonix! Que darle la bienvenida a una banda aquí local y que darle las gracias a Oscar por todo el trabajo que ha hecho hoy. Así que darle la bienvenida, por favor, y fuerte, gente. Que darle una fuerte bienvenida a Bayonex. Oh, 
One of the things that the city needs to do, besides tenants buyouts, restrictions, the city needs to put a moratorium on evictions. We made that demand a year ago. And the mayor and Leno and Campos and Amiano said we're going to go to Sacramento and we're going to change the law to protect San Francisco. We weren't in agreement to that at all. But we supported that. We went to Sacramento and we went and fought the fight. But at the end of the day, they were not successful. Campos, Amiano, the mayor, and Leno were not successful in getting the moratorium on evictions from Ellis Axe here in San Francisco. And so we're back to stating to the Board of Supervisors and the mayor that they need to put a moratorium on all evictions in San Francisco to protect the people of San Francisco. Because when you look at over 4,000 households that have been evicted in San Francisco, you got an epidemic. That's what you got. You got an epidemic. And you know, if you love and care about the natives of San Francisco, then you would do that. And I was told, well, Roberto will be illegal. Well, so what? At the end of the day, Gavin Newsom married gay people and it was illegal. And he fought it in court. If we get sued by the real, real, real estate industry, so what? We can go to court, we can go to trial. Our peers and people of San Francisco are going to sympathize with a senior who's 91 years old who's got evicted. Uh, the, our peers are going to support a disabled person who got evicted. Our peers are going to support a family who got evicted. Our peers are going to support the artist. At the end of the day, any judge, any jury in the right mind is going to uphold the a moratorium of evictions in San Francisco at the end of the day. So, getting back to Campos's legislation, he's got to do be more. That's not enough. Because at the end of the day, yeah, you can say, well, the buyouts are going to cost more. Well, let me tell you, the, 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 the industry, the real estate industry has created LLCs. No longer is it landlords. Now it's LLCs that are going in and evicting people, and they got money. They will pay you to get out. They will pay an arm and a leg to have you move out. Because they know once they move you out, when they flip that house, they're gonna make more money and will cover the cost of the buyout. That's, that's, that's the reality of what's going on right here. So buyouts and increasing the fees on buyouts is, is not the solution. The solution is put a moratorium on evictions in San Francisco. One more question. Yeah.